A gun designer can draw up the ideal firearm, but can you then duplicate that on the factory floor? One way, the best way, is to feed the design into a computer. Then the computer knows the gun, too, and can spell out specs and instructions for machinery with a precision no human being could match. Tied into an automatic drafting machine, the computer draws the receiver for a 410 gauge Model 1100. A hand-built model of the new shotgun is electronically bugged to provide many types of information when the model is fired. Initial bolt velocity, terminal bolt velocity, bore gas impulse, gas cylinder impulse, chamber pressure, and so on. There's initial velocity. All the data goes to the computer, which analyzes it rapidly and makes design modifications for a optimum efficiency. An electronic feeler gauge follows the contours of a handmade stock, recording its exact measurements in three coordinates. Simultaneously, the same numbers flow into the computer, which draws the stock on the drafting table, like a topographical map. The computer can also instruct a machine to cut a steel master that reproduces the stock exactly. Following a variety of masters, a variety of stocks begin to take shape. rifle stocks by hand, and still do in some cases. But this quarter million dollar machine has taken over most of the work. The huge carousel can perform up to 32 separate operations, and exact settings at each stage eliminate any possibility of human error. Here's where modern production techniques have an advantage. When it comes to the end result, fine finishing for instance, nothing can replace the most sensitive computer of all, the craftsman, with his precise touch, keen eye, and years of experience. Here's where we begin making them one at a time. The work that leaves our wood shop rivals the finest of the old cabinet maker's art, and each man proudly stamps his product with his own individual mark. Stocks must be completely smooth for the slightest scratch will be revealed by the fine finish to come. First, though, carefully seal all the pores. Then comes Remington's famous RKW finish. The stocks are sprayed automatically, all to a uniform depth. Another instance in which modern production techniques reveal their value. The tough, weatherproof RKW finish is polished to a satin smoothness found only on the finest furniture. Beautiful, isn't it?
For custom-grade guns, a time-honored tradition of hand checkering. And now steel. In an electric resistance furnace, billets of steel for barrels are brought to white heat. Then into the forge, where hammers enlarge one end to provide the chamber thickness for barrels. Heat treating changes the grain structure of the steel, increasing hardness and strength. Shotgun barrels spin at high speed as drills bite downward from above in the first drilling operation. All along the line, careful checks and close tolerances. An air gauge measures the diameter of finished rifle bores. If there are constrictions or bulges in the bore, the little float will move out of limits and the barrel will be rejected. Precision alignment of a barrel and its ventilated rib at the same time for a trap gun. Preset equipment grinds the ribs to the proper height above the barrel and at the same time assures flatness of the sight line. Then matting to eliminate any glare. Reaming machines drill out the exact choke specified for shotgun barrels. At the same time, they also add high polish to the bore. Receivers too begin with solid billets of steel. And first come the internal cuts, like inletting the action bar slots. Then the outside of receivers takes shape. The computer not only develops gun designs and the masters for making gun components, it can also run factory machinery. It does this by punching out tapes that tell the equipment what to do. The tapes are inserted in consoles that control the machines. Each of these $100,000 machines can perform 12 to 18 operations and has a turret that holds the tools for them. Under instructions from the tape, the machine picks tools from the turret in sequence and then carries out the specified milling operations.
Under a steady flow of oil, locking lugs are milled in center fire receivers. An induction furnace. Here, shotgun magazine tubes are brazed to receivers as flux flows away. A short dip in the chemical bath and any remaining flux or dirt vanishes. End result, a rack full of gleaming Model 1100 components. But the final gleam has only just begun. In metal, as in wood, a really fine finish requires that very special ingredient, the human touch. Here, a last bit of smoothing. Then another step particularly suitable to machinery, a process called vibra honing. Here components enter a tank, which is then filled with tiny, mildly abrasive pellets. The tank vibrates, and the little pellets gently hone every surface and recess of the metal, inside and out. The result is a smooth velvet finish on which working parts glide effortlessly, while providing the perfect base for beauty as well. That new look comes in the bluing bath. The gunsmith's traditional finish is only as good as the surface it encounters. If the metal is velvet smooth, the result is a deep, lustrous finish, something to admire. A good gun is the sum of all its parts. That includes small parts, which are held to specified tolerances and just as carefully handled, heat treated, and so on, as the major elements. Shooters have missed many a chance because some small part failed or didn't fit. We pay a lot of attention to that. Trigger is an absolutely critical small part. Everyone knows the crispness of a Remington trigger pull. One reason, we magnify them optically and then compare them to our drawings. If they don't fit exactly, they're out. All the components, large and small, come together at the bench of a trained gunsmith. He assembles them one gun at a time. This man knows exactly what he's doing and why. We know the way the finished gun is supposed to be and we put it there. It's creative. You can put your own little emphasis on it. You take a little more pride in something you do. I, I, I just enjoy this type of work better. There's some people that wouldn't want it, this type of work, but I enjoy it. And no matter what model I go on, you know, I build uh, the 760s, I can build the 788, the 660s, the 600s. Any model I go on, I carry my stain right along with me. I'm responsible for this rifle. And I wouldn't want anyone that doesn't take the same pride or the same care that I do put my stain on their rifle. That's my stain. Because it is a responsibility. And I guess that's why I like, I like the job, too. I don't really mind the responsibility. The gunsmiths in final assembly have service records of up to 35 years. With skillful hands and a trained eye, they make firearms one at a time, measuring trigger pull, 
checking safety, testing magazine, the final result is indeed a completely individual gun, the best gunsmiths in the world. It is as though this man made this gun for you. 50 or 100 years from now, the Remington record books will show that's exactly what he did and when. For if the gun meets the highly critical standards of this man, he stamps it with his own personal mark of approval. Not the end yet. All firearms that use high-pressure ammunition are proof-tested with loads far more powerful than the heaviest they are designed for. That produces a stamp, too. Centerfire rifles are also targeted before they leave the factory. Then function firing to make sure the magazines and mechanisms of all multiple shot rifles and shotguns are in perfect working order. That includes 22s as well. Here again, that necessary stamp of approval. High-speed photography provides an adjunct to function firing. In a cutaway model 742 automatic, a gun designer can actually see just how well the works work. An awful lot of ammo gets shot up before it's your turn to shoot. The last inspection of all is visual. Does the gun look right? It must, because that will be our customer's first inspection. People all over the world know the quality of Remington workmanship, and so many turn to Remington for that gun of a lifetime, or several lifetimes for that matter. The finest firearms money can buy, in custom grades, Leon Johnson selects a handsome walnut plank for a D-grade model 700 7mm Magnum. This particular plank is excellent as far as grain structure, density of the wood, and also color. The grain is rather straight, but it has tiger tails going in at 90 degree angles from it, which gives it that nice look, but yet with a straight grain through the stock gives it stability. So we made a, a pattern out of, out of paper and we laid it on one of these planks. Now when we laid it on the blank, the reason for this is so that we could make sure the grain structure through the pistol grip was running at the right angle that we want for strength. We open up the, the inletting because we, uh, we do this to make it short and tight begin with so that it can be hand open and get a very tight fit between the barrel and the action in relation to the stock. Then we take a barreled action and after it's all in lead and so on, we put a barreled action, a tri-action so to speak, into the stock to make sure that the stock hasn't warped. If it has any gaps, they call it gap osis, is an indication of a poorly made rifle. Very poor. These we tried to make with no gaps at all and make it very tight. This also is good as far as ability to uh, shooting we call accuracy. Uh, this makes so that you can bed the rifle at the proper points, perfect fit between metal and wood. A rifle made from this piece of wood will hold its place anywhere as far as looks and stability is concerned and it'll probably be a good eye catcher in any gun show or, or any uh, gun enthusiast. As Leon proceeds with the stock, master engraver Bob Rungi works on the receiver. Any tool that's, that's hammered with the uh, uh, chasing hammer requires a little so more softness than we would have on, say, a uh, small shading engraver. Anything that is a fine-grained steel uh, gives us 
uh, a good cutting tool so that it has enough softness so it won't break every time you hit it and uh, get hard enough to cut the steel that you're working on. So uh, I, I, I enjoy, the, enjoy the engraving job more than uh, any other, I think, any other kind of a job. I learn something all the time. It's, it's the type of work, skill, that you enjoy the satisfaction of seeing the product completed. As it's completed, you feel, well, I have done this work, and it's something that I want to be proud of. Gold inlays, too, for the largest surface of a shotgun receiver, model 1100. is careful work. By the time Leon and Bob were through with this rifle, Leon had grown a mustache. Let's take a good look at the ultimate in the gunsmith's art. Leon gives the D-grade seven millimeter a final firing pin check. Wayne Leake is one of the foremost gun designers in the world, and he works at it all the time. This is where you'll find him on holidays and weekends and summer evenings when there's still light in the sky. Here at his own private 100-yard range in the woods behind his house. He built the range himself. There's a tip for shooters in those tractor tires. They cut down noise. Wayne's checking out a 22 target rifle, standard 540X. How's this for a 100-yard group with a production model 22? Another demonstration with a Model 700 bolt action, a 760 pump, and a 742 automatic. All three center fire rifles fresh from the factory floor. Mike Walker, one of the finest bench rest shooters in the country, will fire the bolt action rifle. Jim Steckel will shoot the pump gun, and Leon Johnson on the left takes over the automatic. Each shooter will fire three shots at 100 yards, and Mike starts it off with a bolt action model 700. There's Mike's group. Now Jim with the 760 pump. People sometimes think of pump guns and automatics as somewhat less accurate. But our specs say they have to measure up to the Model 700. Let's see if they do. Not bad at all. Now it's up to Leon with the 742 automatic. In this actual contest, Leon caught the bacon with that 742 automatic. 
Now something new for you varmint shooters. Remington's new 5mm rimfire magnum. It's a hot one, and watch him go. By combining the ancient arts of the craftsman and the gunsmith with the modern arts of computers and technology, the oldest gun makers in America continue to make the best firearms in the world, one at a time. Here on the side of a barn are all of them, the whole Remington line, shotguns and center fires and 22s, bolt actions and pumps and automatics in all the calibers and shot shell sizes they come in. Behind each gun stands a tradition of craftsmanship that goes back over a century and a half of American history. That tradition continues today in firearms individually designed for the targets you want to shoot or the game you want to bring down anywhere in the world. <laughs> 